What's up everyone, I'm OBG for tastingskills.com. Today, we're talking about Stag Jr. Now, this is an extension basically of the antique collection that consists of five whiskeys, starting with the George T. Stag, the Sazerac Rye, 18 year old, the William LaRue Weller, the Thomas H. Andy, and the Eagle Rare 17 year old. Now this bourbon's mash bill is 75% corn, 10% rye, and 15% barley. It enters the barrel at 125 proof and is aged for a minimum of eight to nine years. Now, when we look at the packaging on this, well, it's just the classic packaging. I mean, you know, you get the stag at the front, you get a little bit labeling at the back, you get the George T. Stag born in Kentucky in 1835. He went on to be one of the powerhouses in bourbon in the golden age of bourbon pre-prohibition. This whiskey retails about for $80, but when we go online and look at it, this is between $120 to $200. And a lot of people chase this down since it's uncut, unfiltered, and like I said, it's the baby George T. Stag, which everybody tries to seek out and tries to have the antique collection when you're into bourbon. So how does it actually taste? Well, before we get to tasting here, one thing that I always do is that when I'm tasting high proof bourbon, first thing I do is I always put a few drops of water in one sample, and then I usually take another sample and I proof it down with water, because otherwise you can't really get all of what is in the glass. So let's see the differences. Starting with the full proof. This has a nice deep brown color to it. The alcohol in the nose is very intense, as it should be since this is uncut, unfiltered at cast drink. You get the wood, you get some smokes, you get some hints of caramel, and on the mouthfeel, it does have a very intense burn that turns into layers of sweet notes and sweet spices with a medium finish that is driven by acidity and a deep burn. Now, for me, this is really good, but like I said, it just has a lot of alcohol. And the last thing you wanna do is actually put ice in there because that's just gonna close that bourbon up even more when it comes to the aromas. But if you put a few drops of water in there, that always helps to get the aromas out, and for me, that's one of the biggest things that you have to do. When we taste the proof down, we right away see that the color hasn't changed and that the nose is much more approachable. You get caramel, honey, spice box, the American oak intermingle with the smoke of the charred barrel. On the mouthfeel, you have so many more layers of caramel, spices, white pepper into this long sweet finish that is driven by the acidity in this nice sweet burn that's now minimal. And it's so much more enjoyable. Now, for me, this is an absolute collector. And if you're into American bourbons and you collect whiskeys, well, this is an absolute must. If you have to do the line that I suggest that you do, like I said, this is a chance for you to taste the smaller version of the George T. Stag. And when we look at George T. Stag, you'll be looking easily if you get in line about three to $400 a bottle. And if you go online, then we're talking about $1,000 a bottle easily, depending on the vintage year that you get. Now, all that said, is it absolutely worth it? Of course it's worth it. And you should buy as much as you can, since these are hard to find. In other countries, out of the US, it's pretty much impossible to find. And sometimes, yes, you do get lucky when you find one in a small shop. And if you do, you should buy it. I've also put a link at the bottom so that you can look at the proof that is actually on the bottle, and then you can reference that to know which vintage it is. All right. That's gonna do it for me. I'm OBG for tastingskills.com. Please remember to subscribe. Smash that like button. Leave a comment below if you have any questions and you can always reach me on Twitter if you have questions about anything that concerns tasting, spirits, or beer. And remember, stay sober, my friend. Peace.